Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this second tutorial uh, on object-oriented programming in Java. As you may remember from the first tutorial, we were looking at how to define um, student objects by creating a new class file. Um, and we decided that students have a variety of different properties associated with them. For example, we looked at name, age, and GPA. In today's tutorial, we're just going to construct a different student class file and we're just going to look at some other properties as well. This time, we've got three test scores. We're also going to look at how to design methods uh, in our class file which will allow us to play with the data that's being stored in each object. For example, we're going to design a method which will get one of these scores uh, also, we can calculate the average score and we could calculate the total score. Of course, there are other methods that we can design as well. We are the designers, so really there is no limit to what we can do um, with Java. All right, let's get started. Uh, here I'm in jCreator and this is my main program where lots of things are going to be happening. This is where I will be constructing um, a student object and for sure it's going to look something like this um, student um, bill is a new student round brackets the round brackets tell me that this is a method okay and actually in this method I will be passing three test scores so for example 78 56 and 81. Brilliant. So when I construct a new student, I also pass some data into the class variables that um, we've set up. In fact, let's go and design our new student class file now. And this is my, stu my student class file. Okay. Right, so this is my student class file, and here we already have a method that is waiting to be designed. And this is our constructor method. This method is called every time we construct a new student. And we can see that here. This is our constructor operator, new and this is the method that's called this is student it's this one what we have to realize is when I construct a new student with this design I'm passing three numbers into the object that I'm creating so I need to design my method so that that is allowed to happen before we get there let's just uh, start to type out my object variables and here I've only got three and they are three integers score one score two and score three brilliant now when I construct a student as we've just seen there are three numbers that are being passed and I'm just gonna call mine s1 s2 and s3 whoops okay and when we construct a new student uh, s1 is going to be stored in this object variable s2 is going to be stored in this object variable and s3 is going to be stored in this object variable Th this will store the data permanently we're not going to lose it if we store data coming into our object if we store it in the object variables okay so score 1 is equal to s1 score 2 is equal to s2 and score 3 is equal to s3 brilliant so that data that I'm passing here when I construct a student object this data is now going to be safely stored inside the object variables brilliant and in my main program I can do this system.out.println 
uh, bill dot score one. So I'm going to display the score one variable of this student object, which is I've called bill. So if we build the project, let's see if I've got any syntax errors. Hopefully uh, everything is cool. And process completed. And when we run the, the project, we should see 78. OK. Now I'm going to tell you something super confusing. This will take a little bit of getting used to. OK. So just pay attention, but don't worry if you don't understand this immediately. In Java, when we define classes which allow us to create objects, we, we usually will have some object variables. But these are usually defined as being private. Object variables are mostly defined as being private. This means that we cannot access them directly like this. Now this is to do with data security. Don't want people like hackers to be able to access and, and manipulate data in a computer program. And this will allow people to access and manipulate data very, very easily because we can directly access the variable. By making variables private, we stop that from happening. So when I try now to build my project and try to access score one, I'm probably going to get an error. This is the error. Score one has private access in student. I can no longer do that. That is history because score one is private. What Java recommends is you create something known as an accessor method. So let's just make a little section here for accessor methods within my student class file. The first one that I'm going to make is a public method called getScore1. It's a method, so I have some round brackets, and then I'm going to have my curly brackets where I can put my code. Very easy piece of code. The only thing that this method does is returns score one to whichever part of my program called this method. It just returns a value. Now score one is an integer. There it is. It's an integer. Java needs to know this when I define this accessor method. I need to let it know that it is returning an integer. So public int get score one and this is the code for get score one so I'm just gonna go back to my main program and I'm gonna update this Bill is a student and every student can have access to a method called get score one now then let's build that and see if it works as intended Okay, no syntax errors. Let's now run the project. Hopefully we will see 78. Brilliant. So I'm using an accessor method to access Bill's score one variable. Now don't worry if none of that makes sense at the moment. You kind of get used to this routine of creating private object variables and then creating accessor methods so that we can look at the values stored. So I'm just going to do another one. Accessor methods are mostly public. They return data, so this returns an integer. And this one is going to be called getScore2. And very simple piece of code, return score2. And got another one here, public int get score three up oh, no 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 curly brackets please return score uh, re return score three so I've got three accessor methods here each of them simply return one of the 
object variables. I'm just going to mess around with this idea. Public int get total return. Well, the total, of course, is score 1 plus score 2 plus score 3. I have created a method, a student method, called getTotal, which will return three, the sum of three numbers. So let's see if that works. Get total it was capital T, wasn't it? Bill is a student object, therefore he can access student methods, and one of those methods is get total. So when I build my project, hopefully I've got no syntax errors. Three, two, one, come on. Here we go. Process completed. That's brilliant. Now let's run this file. Hopefully we will see 78 plus 56 plus 81. 215. Bingo. Now I'm just going to do one more um, purely for um, example's sake. Public double get average. Now I'm not sure if this is going to work as a double. Let's find out. Return score 1 plus score 2 plus score 3 divided by 3 because surely that's the average. And in my main program, if I want to access that method, I've got to call it. So this is called calling a method. Bill is a student object, and I'm using the dot operator to call a method. Okay, now let's build my project and run it and see what happens. Three, two, one, here we go. And look at that. It returns those numbers divided by 3, and it returns it as a double. It gives me 0 0.0. Okay? Because I said that this method here will return a double. Okay? So, today we've had an introduction to the idea that Class files have properties. We have object variables. This one had three integer variables, score one, score two, and score three. Java recommends that object variables are maintained as private, and this allows you to increase the security of your code. However, we still need to access this data in our main program or in other programs that we're designing that use student objects. So in order to access the data, we simply create accessor methods. And accessor methods return data. And we simply have to tell Java what kind of data is being returned, whether it's an integer or a string or a double, etc. Okay, thanks for watching.